Hey there, it's Gregory from Dapp University. So welcome back to this free training where I'm showing you how to become a highly paid blockchain developer. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to monetize your skills as a blockchain developer. All right, so before we get into that, let's do a quick recap. You know, in the first part of this training, I talked about the massive opportunity in blockchain, you know, how I made 20K in one week as a blockchain developer, how blockchain developers earn an average of 155K per year in places like San Francisco, how developer demand is growing at 570% year over year. All right. So video two, I talked about, you know, why this is happening. All the billion dollar companies that are getting in to blockchain, how they're using Ethereum, how there's this supply and demand thing kind of going on that makes blockchain developers highly paid. Talk about the types of skills that you need. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to monetize those skills, right? How to market yourself, how to get people to find you as a blockchain developer, right? How you can find other companies and, you know, anybody to pay you, customers, clients, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to also talk about some strategies for becoming highly paid. All right. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. And stay tuned because in the next video, we're going to talk about how to acquire those skills. All right. You want to keep an eye on your inbox because I'm going to send you a link to that next video in this free training. So if you want to become highly paid, you know, you really need two things, right? You need the skills to become highly paid, right? The skills to pay the bills. You know, why is anyone highly paid? Well, they have skills that people are willing to pay for, right? The number two is you need a place for those skills. You need someone to pay them for you. You need to know how to find them, you know, how to identify them, and also how they can find you. That's what we're going to focus on, is how to market yourself as a blockchain developer. So I'm going to walk you through some things that I literally would do myself if I were starting out from square one, right? So I want you first to ask yourself some questions to clarify, because you need to know what you're aiming at if you're going to have a goal. So if you're going to monetize your skills, you know, how are you going to do it? Do you want to work for a big company? Because if you do, then that's really good news. You know, I talked about in the last video how these massive billion dollar companies are getting into blockchain, right? There's going to be plenty of opportunities for big companies who are seeing blockchain as an awesome opportunity and are going to be hiring technical talent, you know, for their businesses. And these people, they're going to be coming in, blazing the trails uh, and pumping lots of capital in the space and hiring people, okay? So if you don't want to work for a big company, that's okay. There's going to be plenty of options for you. But you should be glad that big companies are getting in the space for the reason I just mentioned. They're the ones that are probably going to be, you know, spending large volumes of money uh, to try to figure things out. And all ships are really going to rise at that point. It pumps money into this economy. And, you know, it really helps kind of everyone in the space. There's lots of midsize and smaller companies, startups, you know, small businesses that are getting into blockchain as well because they also see the opportunity, right? So you kind of got to ask yourself, you know, what kind of work do you want to do? Do you want to work for a startup? Do you want to work for a mid-sized company? Do you want to work for, you know, yourself, et cetera, et cetera? There's lots of options. The next question is, do you want to become a freelancer? And if you do, good news, there's lots of people who want to hire freelance blockchain developers, all right? There's lots of companies you work for. There's lots of, you know, clients out there. So you got to ask yourself what kind of work you want to do. You know, do you want to be the jack of all trades freelancer? Do you want to be sort of the developer who does everything that they hire, right? And if you do, you know, you're probably working for a startup, you're probably working for a small business, you might be working one-on-one -on -one with some other client who has an idea, a vision that you're just trying to, you know, materialize, right? So that's one type of freelancer. You know, another type of freelancer is more of a specialist, right? You have a very you know, narrow skill that, you know, someone wants to hire you for. And this might be someone who, you know, wants a one-off, one-time problem solved for their business, or you might be working with a team, right? And that's usually going to be in a larger company, mid-sized to larger company, maybe a startup um, that, you know, is building out a team, you know, this person does this, this person does this. And that's, you know, uh, if you want to do that, do you want to work with a project manager, a product manager, and be in that kind of environment? That's another option for you as a freelancer. Do you want to work remotely? And if you do, there's good news. There's plenty of opportunity for remote jobs and blockchain. The workforce is highly distributed, highly decentralized. A lot of times people have to go outside of their small Small, you know, geographic regions in order to find good developers. You know, they have to really uh, leverage the global talent pool because blockchain is so new. And I talked about that supply and demand problem. Sometimes you just got to look elsewhere to find a good developer. So if you want to work remotely, there's a lot of people who are doing it in blockchain. And I'll also give you a hint. You know, sometimes jobs aren't always listed as remote jobs, but guess what? If you're really good and you can convince someone that you're good and they can't find someone else, there's going to be a high likelihood that they're actually going to hire you as a remote 
uh, developer, as a freelancer or an employee or whatever, right? And sometimes people have a very closed-minded, you know, view on this. I, I, I see that sometimes, right? So, but what if you applied to 10 companies and tried this, right? Or 20 companies, just up that number. Eventually, you're probably going to find someone who will actually say yes, if that's what you really want to do and you are good. You can actually provide the value. All right, next question is, do you want to live in a tech hub? All right, if you do, there's going to be lots of opportunity for you. I talked about places like San Francisco. Um, there's going to be lots of companies there, you know, where you can become highly paid. Lots of capital in that type of area where they're going to pay developers a lot because it's a competitive landscape, right? And they have to, you know, raise the salaries to accommodate people or else they just go work somewhere else. And if you don't live in a tech hub, that's okay too. I don't live in a tech hub, right? So there are a few options for you. You know, you might be able to find a blockchain company in your area, right? So I don't live in a tech hub and there are blockchain companies still here because I live in a city, right? Lots of people are trying to get into this, right? So another option is you could move to a tech hub. You could just go where people are hiring this if you don't wanna work remotely and you wanna be on site, right? And you don't necessarily have to move forever. You can move temporarily just to break into the industry and get the skills, right? And maybe if you do want to work remotely eventually, you could you know, move back to where you live now. And what if you don't want to move at all? Like, I totally understand that. You could look for a company in your area like I just talked about, or you could try to work remotely. And guess what? You don't have to live in a tech hub to work for a company in a tech hub, right? Lots of people are willing to hire remote developers, and that's how you can leverage you know, a high paying job without having to live in one of these tech hubs. And the last question is, do you want to start a business? And if you do, you know, this industry is ripe uh, for opportunity for businesses, people who can come in and actually solve problems with the blockchain. You know, if you can solve a problem with the blockchain that other people can't, and you can provide that value at scale, you're going to have the opportunity to make a lot more money than the average blockchain developer, especially if you got technical skills and get in there, you know, get this ball rolling, you know how to run a business. There's lots of opportunity for you. All right, now that you've narrowed down how you want to monetize your skills, let's talk about how to find, you know, people who can actually pay you. And you really want to develop a multi-part strategy for this. You don't want to rely too much on one source to find your work, okay? So I'm going to go over lots of options here. All right, so where can you find work? Well, you can look at job websites. That would be like, you know, Hired.com. They've got a really great way where you can sign up and actually, you know, get matched with employers, right? You can look on a website like Indeed.com. You can search for jobs and, you know, find job listings and stuff like that. It's a little bit different of a format than Hired, but it's really nice. If you want to become a freelancer, right? Here's the next one. You can look at freelancer websites like Upwork.com, right? It's really easy to get started on Upwork. And this is a great way to just try blockchain. Some people don't want to quit their job. I get that. You can just try blockchain out as a freelancer, even if you work a full-time job right now. You can just do it on the nights and weekends, right? And it's pretty easy to find work on Upwork.com, honestly, especially if you have the skills. So check out Upwork if you want to be a freelancer. There's lots of other ways to get started in freelancing, but that's that's a really easy one. The next one would be Reddit, all right? There's actually a really good thread on Reddit I'll show you. This is uh, the Ethereum Dev Reddit or ETH Dev uh, Reddit. There's a, a big post that talks about, you know, who's hiring. And there's lots of companies that go in here looking for blockchain developers, all right? So let's look at the next source. Uh, so meetups, events, and conferences, okay? So local meetups are a great way. If there's anyone talking about blockchain in your area, I highly recommend going there if you're looking for a job. I've gotten lots of work from meetups. They're really great ways to network and connect. And, you know, sometimes people just say, hey, we're hiring. And, you know, you could start those conversations at those places. Also conferences, right? So like ETH Denver is a good example of a blockchain developer conference for Ethereum. You know, DevCon is a really good example of one where you'll see lots of people from the Ethereum Foundation and things like that there okay so there's lots of conferences that go on year round that you can uh, go to if you're trying to become a blockchain developer so your personal website or blog is a really good example so i'll just pull up you know my own personal website here right this is you know dapuniversity.com with my own blog you know if you can write about what you're doing uh, it's a really great way to attract other people i mean i get lots of project leads all the time in my email inbox uh, from my YouTube channel, my website, and you don't even have to do it to the same scale that I have. I mean, I have lots of visitors on my website every month, but even on a small blog, like you can still get a good amount of traffic, uh, you know, for people who want to hire you just based on that. Okay. So also your social media, right? That's the next one. So like your Twitter, you know, I do a lot of YouTube and Twitter. Uh, you know, I've grown my YouTube channel, you know, quite a bit over the past, you know, year and a half. Um, and it's still growing. So that's a good example of, you know, social media. You really want to focus on giving value to people. And you'd be surprised at the opportunities that come out of that if you want to become a freelancer or if you want to just get a regular job, right? 
So that's ways for people to come to you. You know, these are more offensive strategies where you're looking for the work. And this is a strategy where like, you know, you put stuff out there and people come to you asking you to solve their problems because they've seen you, you know, solve those problems, you know, out in the wild. All right. Once you've gotten that conversation going with someone who wants to pay you for your skills, right? They're going to want to know what you can do, right? They're going to want to know how you can actually provide them with value. Okay. And so for that reason, you really need a portfolio, because a portfolio shows them what you can do, right? It's really hard to fake uh, your skills if you've built something for real and they can see that you've built it and put it out there in the wild. It's working and they can go test it out, right? So that's why it's really important to have a portfolio. And I'm gonna show you a little trick about how you can create a portfolio, okay? Because you don't just need a portfolio, you also need a resume because if you're applying for a job, people want that, right? You usually need a website where people can go visit you, you know, your about me site. But I discovered a trick when I was first starting out. I felt a little overwhelmed by like, oh, I need, a, I need all this stuff, right? So I decided to just create everything in one place. I decided to create a website that was my portfolio, that was my resume, that was my about me website, all in one, right? And I'm gonna show you an example of it right here on my screen. So here's an example of the website I'm talking about, right? This is a resume, basically, website that also functions as an about me and it has a portfolio, okay? So what this is gonna do, number one, is be efficient. You don't have to you know, update a whole bunch of different things, but it's also gonna set you apart, right? Not everybody does this. A lot of people just send their resumes out in PDFs or Word documents. And this is going to say, oh, I took the time to actually turn mine into a website and it looks nice, right? So I just created this. Uh, this is a fake person. Um, I just, you know, put a dummy image in here. He's not a dummy. I just, this is a, a fake image. <laughs> um, so anyways, this is an example, right? So just scrolling down this, it's got your experience. Uh, this could be your work experience or your, or your clients. Um, if you're a freelancer, you know, your education, if you went to college, university, you know, whatever you did, you did a boot camp maybe. Um, so here is your portfolio section. This is where you really want to stand out, right? I use images here um, because it sort of disrupts the eyes or scrolling down the page. You know, it's going to have a link to the portfolio project and having the image, you know, kind of gives them an idea of what they're clicking through to. It sort of sets that expectation, right? And ideally in your portfolio, you want to have a, a real world project that shows them what you can do, not just like a to-do application. It's okay to do to-do applications in order to just learn the skills, but eventually you want to put those into you know, practice to build a real world project because those are the kinds of skills people are going to pay you for, right? You want to have you know, real world skills and that's what they're going to want to see. So you can link out to that. And you also want to link to some code, probably, if you're a technical person and you want to, sorry, if you're going to work for a technical client, they're going to want to see what you can do. So you can link to your GitHub uh, repo with the code to your project or part of the code, right? If you, don't want to, if you don't want to unveil the whole thing, at least a code sample so they can see what you can do, all right? And I can, you know, also set this up on my GitHub. I can put this page on my GitHub so that it's running on my GitHub domain and people can automatically go back to your GitHub just by seeing it in the URL, right? It's a really great way for them to find out about you. You know, GitHub is another awesome social networking tool for developers. All right, now lastly, I wanna talk about a secret weapon, right, that can 10X your results if you're trying to break into the blockchain industry, all right? And that's this idea of mentorship, of having sort of someone on the inside who's been there before, all right, because they can be your guide to getting into the blockchain industry, okay? So why is this so important? Well, they know the big picture, right? They know the technical skills, they know the job scene, they know all the nuances and details. They're not limited by your perspective because you are limited by your perspective if you've never done it before, right? And that's what mentors can do. They can give you their perspective, their judgment, their wisdom. And if you can find a mentor, it's an invaluable resource. And you can find them by going to meetups, conferences, even looking online, just you know, reaching out to people and telling them, hey, you know, I'm trying to look for help. You might be surprised if you just kind of go out looking. So let me just tell you a story about how mentorship has, you know, profoundly impacted me. Okay. So I'll go back to when I first started, you know, learning how to code. Now I'm a self-taught programmer. I started, you know, learning with online resources. Basically, I'm a huge believer in online resources because it helped me so much. Um, and when I first started, you know, I was making good progress, and then I found a mentor. I went to a meetup and found, you know, a freelancer who was a more senior uh, developer, and he wanted to, you know, hire some more junior level freelancers, right? So there's this automatic value exchange. You know, I would work for him and he would teach me, right? And so I still got paid, but there was still, you know, this sort of symbiotic relationship going on. 
And I'm going to tell you, that made such a big difference. I'll, I'll hear, here's why. So I was doing pretty well, right? Just making steady progress. But after I got mentorship, it 10 x my results, okay? So when I started learning how to code basically from scratch, basically within a year's time, I was making six figures as a developer, right? And I don't think I could have done that that quickly uh, without mentorship. So it really speeded things up and made all the difference and gave me a huge amount of momentum. And that had compounding effects like later on in my career. I just kept moving faster and faster and faster because I got a huge jump start from that early uh, mentorship, right? And since then, I've had lots of other mentors in other areas, you know, just in my personal life, uh, fitness and business. I've, I've even paid lots of money for mentors and it's always been worth it because I've gotten such a big ROI from it. All right, so that's an overview of how to monetize your skills as a blockchain developer and some strategies about how you can market yourself and break into the industry, right? In the next video, I'm gonna talk about how to acquire those skills to become highly paid. All right, I've actually put together a blockchain developer bootcamp to teach you those skills, right? And it's the program that I wish I had when I started out as a blockchain developer, right? I've gone down all the hard roads that I don't want you to have to go down yourself, you know, by yourself. So that's why I created this as a best way for you to learn the skills to become a highly paid blockchain developer. That's my blockchain developer bootcamp, which I'm gonna talk about more in the next video. So I'm very excited to show you this. And you're gonna to wanna to watch that next video on this training. You know, keep an eye on your inbox because I'm gonna give you some resources also on how to market yourself as a blockchain developer and also give you the option to be personally mentored by me. So keep an eye on your email inbox and I'll see you in that next training video.